Bollinger Automobile Troubleshooting. If you're looking for help fixing your Bollinger Automobile, look no further. Our comprehensive Bollinger Automobile Troubleshooting Guide will explain common issues, provide tips, and show you how to read your model's error codes. Coolant issues. As with any car, it's important to keep your EV cool to avoid overheating. While EVs are less likely to overheat, they are sensitive to extreme temperatures. And running the air conditioning in extreme weather conditions can impact overall battery health. EVs are built to keep themselves cool. So if your car is overheating, it may be a coolant issue. Check the owner's manual to find out the recommended maintenance schedule. Since this can vary a bit from model to model, ask a mechanic if you have any concerns. Since trying to change the coolant yourself may void the warranty. Brake issues. Electric cars use a system called regenerative braking, which conserves energy from slowing down or stopping your vehicle by using it to charge the battery. Some electric cars even have a one-pedal driving mode that allows you to slow down by lifting your foot off the accelerator instead of pressing on the brakes. The good news is that this significantly expands the life of your brake pads, since they aren't subject to as much pressure as standard brakes. However, they still need to be serviced occasionally. Check the brake fluid every two years and change it depending on its condition. If you're new to regenerative braking, then one pedal driving mode may feel a little different at first. Get used to how your brakes feel so you'll be able to recognize any issues before they become a problem. Most brake parts, such as brake pads and brake discs, will last longer than they would on a conventional vehicle, but still need to be replaced when they wear down. Battery issues. When it comes to electric car batteries, there are two things that can cause you trouble. The first is the conventional 12 volt battery and the second is the lithium ion battery. If you're having trouble starting your car, the first thing to check is the 12 volt battery, just as you would with a gas powered car. This is the battery that powers the dashboard and electrical components, not the battery that powers the engine. If it's dead, you can use a gas powered car to jump start it, but you can't jump start it with another electric car. The lithium ion battery is the more serious EV repair issue. While electric car batteries lose some charging capacity over time, certain conditions, such as overheating, can speed up the degradation process. Newer models have advanced thermal management systems, so this isn't as much of a worry as it once was. Electric cars can last as long as conventional cars, if not longer. Finding electrical faults in your car's wiring. Now that we have covered some basic troubleshooting techniques, what is the best way to find an electrical fault fast? It depends on the nature of the problem. For a dead circuit, the first thing to look for is voltage at the load point. Use your voltmeter or 12 volt test light to check for voltage. If there is voltage, the problem is either a bad ground connection or the component itself has failed. Check the ground connection with your ohmmeter. If the ground connection is good, the fault is inside the component. If there is no voltage in the hot wire to the component, then the problem is in the wiring. Trace back through the fuse panel or relay or circuit breaker until you find voltage. Now look for an open or short that is preventing the current from reaching its correct destination. Next comes bad connections. The resistance created by a loose or corroded connection will cause a voltage drop that can have an adverse effect on circuit components. An ohmmeter can be used to check non-powered circuit connections for excess resistance but a better method is to use a voltmeter to check for a voltage drop across a connection. The voltmeter leads are connected on either side of the circuit component or connection that is being tested. If a connection is loose or corroded, it will create resistance and produce a reading on the voltmeter. As stated earlier, a voltage drop of more than 0.4 volts means trouble. And ideally it should be 0.1 volts or less. Sourcecompare.com